Hello and welcome to this video on how to install Vitus and uh, get ready to start working with the Vitus application. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Xilinx website, we're going to go to their downloads and licensing area and we're going to download Vitus. In this instance we're going to be working with a Linux installation so we're going to download the 2020.1 Linux self-extract environment. Now to do so we'll need a Xilinx account and a registered Xilinx account and we can just sign into that account and then download the uh, application from there. So we can click on download on the export approval uh, form and after a few seconds we should be able to see uh, our, our Linux application and we can then save that to our hard disk on the on the machine. Now this is going to be the main element of our, of our application that we're going to be installing today. Once it's downloaded and installed what we need to do is we need to go to it and we need to change the properties on there to and allow it to run as a executable program. Once we've done that and it, we're allowed to run as an executable program, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install it. Now when we install it we need to make sure that we use the root privilege command, the sudo command, to actually run this through so that we can install it in the directory on the network that we, that we want to. So we're going to be installing this in the tools area of our file system. So once the unified installer uh, pops up, check that our operating system is valid. And again, we need to sign into our Xilinx account. Once we've signed into our Xilinx account, uh, we can give the username and ID and password. And then we're, we can set this to download and install the tool. We, can, we have to accept these next to license conditions. And we want to install Vitus. And when we install Vitus, we also get the Vado design tools. And in this instance, I'm not going to uh, install any engineering sample devices, but we can see the directory we're going to be installing it into is the Xilinx tools directory. Uh, once we've got that and we're all ready to go, we click on next uh, that we can create the directory if we want. Once we're happy with everything on the summary page, then we will click on install and the process will start installing. Now, as it's going through and we're starting to do that installing, it will take a little while to do, but eventually, uh, once it's complete, you'll see the installation complete button and then clicking that will close that. And then we can close the Xilinx installation center as well. If we open a file browser, then we can go to other locations. We can look on our computer under the tools area and under the Xilinx area. We should see that we've got both Vivado and Vitus installation. So under the Vivado in area, you'll see everything you need for Vivado. And under the Vitus area, we'll see everything we need for Vitus as well. Coming back then, we'll see the uh, we'll see the tools area. And now what we need to do now is install the Xilinx runtime. So we can get the Xilinx runtime by going to the by going to the Vitus page. And on the Vitus page there, we can scroll all the way down. We can take a look for more information on the Vitus software platform. And when we get down the get down the bottom here, this provides a grade of information on the on Vitus itself. But we're interested in the Xilinx runtime. Now we can take a look and read this page at the Xilinx runtime, and I'll explain to you what the Xilinx runtime is and how it's used in OpenCL to accelerate from the processor core or host core onto the uh, programmable logic. Now to download it, we click on the Getting Started. And if we're working with an Alveo platform, then download the platform for you, the XRT for your specific Alveo platform, so U50, U200, uh, and, and download that. If we're working with an embedded platform, so a ZCU104 or an Ultra96, download the Xilinx runtime for the embedded platform. Once we click on that page, it will take us to the downloads icon and we have to download the correct op the correct runtime for the operating system that we have. So on my operating system, I'm using Ubuntu 18.4. So I'm going to download the Ubuntu 18.4 runtime. I'm going to save that to my downloads directory. And because in this example, I'm going to show you how to set up the simple ZCU 104. I'm also going to download the ZCU 104 base platform for Vitus. Now this to do this will, will ask us to sign a license agreement, which we can do online. So I'm going to tick sign the license agreement and I'm going to click it, click agree and it will begin to download the license agreement. And we're going to save that platform as well into our downloads area. So you should see the XRT in your downloads area and you'll see as well that the Xilinx uh, 104 base platform is currently uh, down, downloading. Now what we need to do as well, there's a couple of additional packages that we need to install 
uh, to get Vitus working and to work with Vitus. So if we open a terminal window, uh, we can install the packages that are that are necessary uh, to get going. So we can use the sudo command again because obviously we want root privileges. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to install three packages: the OpenCL library, the OpenCL headers, and the OpenCL development environment. And we're going to do this just for a free uh, free command line uh, issue command line instructions as you can as you can see here so it'll take a few minutes uh, to download and to pull and to pull them in and obviously we need to know that we need to know the, the password but it will allow us to run through and to create our uh, download and this once we these are installed this will work with our Vitus installation to allow us to create that accelerator platform that we want to be able to move functionality from the host onto the programmable logic so it'll be it'll be worth the it'll be worth the wait but it is quite simple as i said to to get us up and going so once we've got the file we're just going to do the final of the three now uh, once that's in once that's installed uh, we will be uh, good to go hopefully and install the xilinx runtime so this will take a few seconds to download and comes in and then once that's done uh, we'll be making that start with our with our runtime in, with our runtime installation, which shouldn't be uh, too difficult uh, and take too long to do neither. The long the long part of this installation is installing Vitus. So now we've got that. What we can do is we can install uh, the uh, Xilinx runtime, and again we need to use root privileges. We need to use the sudo command because we want to install it into the opt directory. So we're going to click on OK once we've done that, and it's going to install the it's going to install the XRT, and this is going to download all the packages that are needed for us to work with OpenCL. Now it might take a might take it might take a few minutes, uh, and I've truncated this video just to show uh, just to show that just to show the in the interest of uh, speed, uh, rather than showing it just downloading uh, everything that we that we need it to do to get working. Once this is down, once this is downloaded, we can we can then take a look on in our file browser. We can take a look in the opt directory, and what we should see is a Xilinx folder and the XRT folder, as well as the setup scripts uh, to, to set us going. Now, what we need to do is we're going to install the platforms in this area as in this area as well. Uh, so under the Xilinx area, we need to create a directory, a new directory. Obviously, we can't do that using the uh, using the file browser because we don't have root permissions to do that. So we're going to open a new terminal, and in that terminal window, we are going to uh, make a directory and call that directory platforms. Okay, once that directory is being created, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our terminal window that is in the that is controlling the downloads directory and we're going to copy across the compressed zip file across into that directory we've just created now we need to use a sudo command again because again we're copying into a directory that needs root privileges so once we've once we've done that once we've got the password correct uh, we can move across and if we go back to looking at that directory now what we'll see is we'll see the um, we'll see under the platforms directory We'll see that compress. Well, we'll see that compressed file. Now, what we need to do is unzip that file into the platforms directory so we can work with it in Vitus. Now, how we're going to do this is we're going to use the sudo command again because we need root privileges to be able to be able to do that. Uh, but what we need to do first is we need to be in the correct directory. So we're going to change directory in our in our terminal window into the platforms directory, and then we're going to uncompress this file using the sudo command. Uh, sudo unzip and then the file then the file name now this might take a few minutes because it's actually quite a large file uh, but once it's completed uh, we've got everything we need to do then to go forwards with our Vitus development so we've got the Vitus tool installed we've got the Xilinx runtime installed and we've got a platform installed the trick now comes in just opening up Vitus and just confirming that we've got everything that we need and, and that there are no issues Okay, however, before we can start and create a new platform, there's a couple of extra elements that we need to download. And this is the uh, common system files for the Zinc MPSOC. So what we can get when we download this is we will get 
the uh, a standard image, a uh, file system, and the ability to create a sysroot. Now, this image, the file system, and the sysroot are also going to be needed in conjunction with the specific platform that we've previously downloaded to enable us to actually build an accelerated application using um, using Vitus. So once this is downloaded, what we want to do is we want to extract the file and we can extract this anywhere we want within our file system. So I'm going to extract this into a new directory. I'm going to, I'm going to call my directory uh, something like sysroot, I think, when, I, uh, when, when we do this. So we're going to download this directory. We're going to call it a specific thing. We can call it whatever we want. There's no, uh, there's no uh, specific name in here. So I'm going to call my name, put mine sysroot. I'm going to create that directory. And then I'm going to extract the files into that. So once these files have been extracted, what we're going to get in there is we're going to find, like I say, we're going to find a kernel. We're going to find a kernel image. We're going to find a. Uh, we're going to find. We're going to find the kernel image. We're going to find the root file system, which is compressed, and we need to uncompress that. So we're going to open Archive Manager again, and we're going to ask it to extract it, and we'll extract it into the same directory that uh, that we've done that we've done previously. Uh, so it's going to extract into that. It might might take a few minutes uh, for it to ex for it to extract, depending upon the capabilities of your system. Uh, but it will run it will run through there, and it will uh, will quickly hopefully extract into uh, into that directory. And what this means is this means when Vitus compiles, we we're going to have a root file system that's already written our SD card image. So if we're working at the edge with the ZCU one hundred and four or the Ultra ninety six board, then there's that root file system that gets copied onto our and onto our SD card. So once we've done this, we can close the uh, we can we can close we can close that. And then what we need to do, and we'll see. Obviously, we've got the uh, root for file system there. What we're going to do then is we're going to source this script. We're going to open a new terminal window. And we're going to ask it to do that. Once we've got this new terminal window, we're going to use a root command. So we're going to use sudo, and then we're going to uh, just do the command to run the script. And we'll run the script sdk.sh. And what this will do is this will, once we've given it our password for our root command, uh, what, what this will do is it will extract the SDK, the, the sysroot, into uh, into a specific directory. Now, by default, it's going to put it into the opt Linux 2020.1 directory, which is why we need to, to use it in the default directory. We hit yes, and then it will run through and it will extract the SDK and set up. Now, this will take a little time uh, to do, but once it's completed, uh, what we can do there is we can go to our directory and then we can see that we've installed the uh, root file, the sysroot there correctly as you'd hope. And you'll see the two sysroot, the ARC64 and the x86 sysroots. And this is exactly what we need now to get started. Now, if we go back to the tools directory and the Vitus directory, uh, under here we can open a new terminal and we can source the settings.64 file. And if we once we run this, we can type in the command Vitus and it will open the Vitus integrated development environment. So the so the so the GUI as we do this, it will ask us for our workspace. Now, the workspace is where we want to save the projects and the platforms that we're going to be creating. Now, for this example, I've just saved it under my normal working uh, under my normal working directory, my normal uh, home directory. Once you're happy with where you want to save it. Click launch and you'll see the tool launch. And then just to check that we've got everything installed correctly, click create application project. Click on next on the next one. And then you should see that 104 platform installed there. And there we are. We're ready to go now with the labs that we're going to be creating over the uh, tutorial sessions.